What's going on, y'all? So um, what's going on, y'all? Don't man, I do got on the same t-shirt that I had on last night. Don't don't worry about it, okay? Uh, I had threw that on for the video last night just to throw it on, but. I had just came back to get vaccinated. And this is the review for uh, Married to Medicine. I told y'all that I was going to bring it to y'all. Uh, I got my second dose. Let me tell y'all this. Like, I'm really going to invest. I, I said this on my Instagram, you know what I'm saying? But I'm really about to invest, okay? That's the next. After I do this big move that I'm about to do, bitch, the next thing is Ashley is about to get a car, okay? Ashley going to be zoom zoom on these asses, all right? Because... Um, not because I'm tired of paying for Uber and Lyft. It's because, bitch, you just never know exactly what quality fucking drivers you gonna get with them motherfuckers. Um, so on my way back from getting vaccinated, my second dose, y'all gotta check in on me to see if I'm all to the good because I don't know. I woke up with a headache because I barely got any sleep because of my neighbors and all that shit. Because as soon as I finished that review last night, bitch, they was back at it. They was back at it. I said, what is up with this? But the car, it started raining. First of all, it's warm as shit outside. And it's going to be warm as shit for this whole week, okay? And y'all know how Chicago do. We get crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it was literally a shootout. This is why I got to really leave this area. Because it was literally, they was just going pop, 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 pop. And I didn't understand it, you know? And the neighbors, they was just still playing their music like it's, it's nothing, you know? But on the way home, the guy... You know, it started raining, and he was like, oh, my God, he gets upset. I didn't understand why he was upset. Baby, he was upset because he was in an Uber rental car, okay? And they gave him a car that basically was a fucking lemon, all right? From the outside, it looked good, but the shit just really wasn't working. He said he was out there, you know... Uh, out there in Gurney Mills, if you from um Illinois, you know where Gurney Mills at. That's where uh Six Flags at. Okay, and that's when the wipers and stuff went the complete out. Okay, so we didn't have no windshield wipers. He said the goddamn back tire is fucked up, and I realized that when we was almost home. Mind you, you could have told me this before we got up in the car, and I would have canceled. Okay, because we had to get on the expressway. The tire says, skr, 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 skr. I said, oh no. Okay, bitch. I was bracing on. I said, listen, I got a few blocks. I got a few, a few blocks, okay? Get me there. Get me there. I said, oh, my God. I be playing with my life up in these cars, okay? So, it is time to get my own shit. But um, somebody going to be like, damn, bitch, we've been telling you that. Don't do not do that. Don't do that. I already know, okay? Y'all already know I have a trauma, traumatic experiences with driving and shit like that. It's not that I can't drive. It's that, you know, I got to get over that little phobia. You know, I've been in a few car accidents, and I wasn't even the one driving, and it just fucked me up, okay? It really did because I got injured in each one. Bitch, that's why my knees fucked up now, okay? But um, anyway, I always got to start this off with a goddamn story. I'm so sorry. Yeah, we get into the episode, uh, Married to Medicine, this season um, eight, <clears throat> episode five, you know, I think it's called Friendship Foes and Marriage to Woes, okay? So, basically, we see what everybody getting into, you know, and, um, Simone gets on the phone with Toya, you know, she was like, girl, why you leave me at the party like that, or, uh, at the little game again like that? She was like, you know what, girl, it's just that I just, I want to try and leave you, I just didn't want to get into no more drama, okay? Like, for now on, just don't take me nowhere, whatever, that it's going to be some drama, because I'm trying to stay out of it. I said, Toya, since the fuck when, okay? Drama follows you wherever you go. But, okay, I understand that, because, you know, at one point, at a certain point, you get tired of having to, you know, just go back and forth with people for no reason especially when you inserting yourself and shit yourself okay that's what Toya do sometimes but um she was like she having this little get together you want to get by the pool or whatever and have you know Carrie come over I said oh bitch I ain't seen Carrie since she got booted off the first season was it the first or two she was like two two or one season bitch I was like oh okay Miss Carrie we'll see Miss Carrie Miss Carrie that's what they say you know Miss Quiet Miss Quiet you know I was like all right we'll see what Carrie giving I said why they boo her off did they boo her off or did she decide to leave put that down in the comments if you know the answer and she said also she gonna invite invite Anila I was like okay of course that's your good girlfriend I heard they not friends no more that's what Funky Dineva said up in one of his videos when he was talking about it you know can somebody confirm that but um anyway 
It ain't nothing like going up for a bitch and then all of a sudden you ain't friends no more. And you looking back like, damn, bitch, I really had your back. And look how you do me. You know what I'm saying? We ain't even there no more. But anyway, she also said she's going to invite Lisa Nicole. <laughs> I was like, girl, Dr. Darren, <laughs> is he going to be on here? Bitch, I miss Dr. Darren and his whole ass. But uh, anyway, I said, all right, you know, so they're going to have a little pool thing. You know, we got Eugene. He's out for the weekend. And once again, Eugene can't even get a weekend to himself, okay? Eugene be up in the hospital saving lives, okay? Just literally saving lives, you know what I'm saying? You know, putting his life at risk, coming home, putting his family life at risk. Baby, he can't just sit down and just chill, put his feet up, drink his beer, and just watch the game. No, he got to cook for Toya and her people. That's a good husband. Eugene is a good man because, bitch, I would have told her, you can do it. Uh, you better order out, okay? Because this weekend is mine's, and it ain't got nothing to do with me. It's mine's, okay? We gonna throw a boys' weekend. That's what I would have told her ass. But um, you know that's a good man right there. That's a good man. He was up in there, you know, fixing the food or whatever. You know, uh, uh, what's his name? Not Curtis, but Cecil. He come over there. He like, oh shit. Let me tell you something. Is it me or is Cecil trying to dress a little bit younger? hipper with the hair and everything and you know he got his little jerseys on or whatever i said you know what cecil looking kind of decent this season i don't know what it is but okay cecil i see you you know so they doing all of that and having a little good time you know he hyping his boy up like yeah boy look at them oysters okay yeah you know the food looking good and shit you know it did look good i ain't never had oysters but with the shit the way that he fixed that oyster i probably try some, you know, it look like in one number cheese and some little, you know, parsley and some little onions and stuff on there, green onions and shit. Um, i probably fuck it up, you know what I'm saying? i probably fuck it up, you know, and so all the girls start coming over there. Miss Carrie get that. I said, oh, okay, Miss Carrie, you're looking good. You're looking nice, okay? We can give her that, you know, with her British flag uh, bikini on. Simone show up, Anila show up, and then here comes Lisa, Lisa Nicole. I said... Okay, girl, I'm a, I'm a it's clean slate, clean slate. I'm going to let you go, bitch. I'm going to let you go, okay? Clean slate, because I don't even remember why we didn't fuck with her in the first place. Bitch, I got to go back. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back, and I'm going to look at the whole uh, Married to Medicine franchise over again, because this show was a gem. I don't even know if I, rec I started re uh, reviewing from the first season. But, baby, when they got out there and... um. They was talking about, you know, some old people that we used to fuck with or whatever. And then they get to Lisa Nicole. She was like, you know, Toy said she like two miles away from her. So it's about time that she came and saw the house. So, you know, do what you got to do, boo-boo. And she was like, you know, um, she left us. No, not necessarily left us. She was ran out. I said, first of all, you got to be a weak bitch to be run out of something. Okay, bitch, you not finna run me out of no goddamn well. I don't care who it is. And then they showed the flashback between the arguments that was happening in that infamous argument between her and Quad when they was at that restaurant and Quad was talking about she was cheating and um well Darren was cheating and then she talked about Quad being a lesbian and all this stuff it was a mess when they got into that throwing glasses and shit that was some good times that was some good times okay I said oh I remember that <laughs> you know um and then, you know, they start having the flashback to, you know, since they was at the pool, Toya's pool or whatever, they have flashbacks to Carrie. Um, that first party that they had on the first season when Toya and Mariah got into that fight. Okay, they were scrapping. They were scrapping, you know, and we talking about the fight that happened with uh, uh on the Real Housewives of Potomac with Monique and goddamn Candace, bitch. Them motherfuckers was on there scrapping on the first goddamn season, okay? This was like the first or second episode and then became cool again. Like, who does that? It wouldn't have been me. It wouldn't have been me, okay? Bitch, y'all already know how I feel about that, but you know, they better than me because, girl, I fuck you up on site every goddamn time I see you after that. <laughs> But, you know, after that, you know, they just kicking it in the pool. You know, Toya liking the vibe. And I can't blame her. It's nothing like being around people that you genuinely connect with. Whether she being fake or not about it, she was enjoying the uh, the, uh, the moment. And then had to put out there that she had a dream about her and Simone having a threesome with some dude or whatever. And Simone was turning the dude out. I said, ooh, this is a little spicy. Okay. You know, um... 
They out there kicking. Next thing you know, Simone tried to get out the water and her wig then came off. I said, shit happens. Truth be told, you should have just left it like that, y'all, up in the water. That's how you know um, they just get in the water for show. Okay, they ain't finna do no swimming. We just finna sit here, put our little feet in or whatever. But it was funny. They was having a good time, so I ain't got no complaints about it. So, um, we get into Dr. Damon and Eugene going to see Dr. Scott in his new office and facility. Um, we get Contessa coming home and talking to her niece, uh, Damon's, well, not Damon, but Scott's niece, her niece-in-law. And, um, her niece, bitch, that's what we call it. You know, playing with the kids or whatever. And they both just having separate conversations with the boys and with her niece or whatever about what's going on in their relationship, okay, and their marriage. And at this point in time, like, I just want them to get to the nook and cranny of it because I don't want to keep on going back and forth with them telling us that they got problems and stuff still ain't the same or whatever. You know, with Contessa, she talking to the niece like, listen, girl, I wanted to go to counseling and whatever, but he don't want to go. And it's just not working. You know, we don't talk to each other the way that we need to talk to each other. We don't do this. We don't do that. We've been having the same argument for over 10 years. And it's like, we don't really like this and really like that. Baby, what it sounds like from what Contessa is saying is basically that they don't like each other. Okay? That's what I'm getting. Like, if you having all these issues and you've been putting up with it for the past 10 years, why are y'all together? And the way that she kind of making it seem like is if y'all don't go to counseling, if y'all can't get over this, y'all just might as well just get a divorce okay um i don't know like you making it seem like the love was never there or you probably fell out of love with each other a long time ago and y'all just settling right now and i don't like that okay and then you know over there with the boys um um damon and uh eugene was helping him put up the flat screen and they was like so y'all really up in here working together you know and they're going to be sharing offices and shit like that. And he was like, you know, I'm working part-time. She was going to be working part-time. And, of course, Eugene and Toy was like, um, no, I couldn't be working with my spouse every day. You know, even Dr. Damon and, um, you know, Heavenly said they couldn't do that shit. But, you know, Eugene had to leave. And so Dr. Damon and Scott had a, uh, you know, conversation about everything that's going on. And when he brought up the fact about the counseling and how they tried counseling, it didn't work. And Dr. Damon and Heavenly was talking about the fact that they went to a counselor at one point too and it did not work as well it kind of made things a little bit worse because according to dr heavenly you know dr damon knew more than the, um you know the 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 counselor and they make the worst patients because they're doctors and they think they know it all and stuff like that you know and so they just get into this conversation you know what a man wants and if the man feels like they're not getting what they need or whatever. You know, this is how he would react. And Scott was like, she wanted to open up a practice. I just wanted to buy a boat, okay? You know, you have to show appreciation for each other. And that's how the marriage will work and everything. You know, Dr. Damon has to give his little words of wisdom or whatever. He's so kind, cool, and collected with it. I like him really much. I really do. Um, but at this point in time, I think they need to stop talking to other people about it. And Contessa and Dr. Scott need to just sit their asses down and put everything out on the table. And look, if we gonna make this work, we need to really make this work. And we need to really get all these, um, problems out because ain't no way there should be no reason why we having the same issue time after time after time after time because y'all not fully communicating that's the problem and you're not doing anything to resolve it y'all just pushing that shit to the side until it explode over and tell somebody step out and find what it is that they're not getting from this relationship from somewhere else and somebody gonna get hurt y'all hurting each other okay bitch i can be the relationship expert in this bitch so dr jackie and um dr heavenly they meet up and, you know, this just reminiscent of how Dr. Jackie and Dr. Simone used to meet up uh, for lunch or whatever. And they do get into the conversation about what's going on between Jackie and Simone. And, um, you know, Dr. Heavenly said, you know, me and Simone, we met up and, you know, basically said we're going to put forth the effort to try to make a relationship between them work. And so that's what she's going to do. Simone's going to put forth the effort and I'm going to put forth the effort. With me, you can just come straight forward with Simone. Sometimes you have to tiptoe around and you know this. So basically, you know, you have to just be the first one to come out there and try to say something. Okay. At this point. 
and she wants them to be cool again. You know, she even starts talking about how, remember when we was in Miami and they used to call us the Golden Girls and she wants to get that back. And, you know, those ladies were there for her when she was in her time of need and she wants that closeness back again, you know, with all three of them. Girl, what I doing to my face? Um, uh, I was laying on it, my bad. Um, that's the... That's one of the things I hate about being fucking light-skinned. No shade, but I do. Because, bitch, when I get bruised or you, you lay on a bitch too too much and it'll look like somebody beat my ass. And I hate that shit. But, um, anyway. So, what was I saying? Yes. You know, she wanted her to call uh Dr. Uh, Simone right then and there. And she wound up calling her, you know, because they want to put this to breast. And she, I was surprised that Simone actually answered the FaceTime. And I'm surprised she FaceTimed her instead of just called her, audio called her. But Simone answered the FaceTime and Dr. Jackie was like, you know, I'm just wondering when we can get together and we can kick it or whatever, you know, with my friend. And Dr. Simone kind of paused like, hmm. And Dr. Jackie was like... That kind of make me feel like you don't think we're friends. She was like, I mean, we can meet up, but I don't want you to have your hopes up that or any expectations that, you know, things are going to be what you expect them to be or whatever. So basically, Jackie on one, um, one step and Simone is on a different page. Jackie on one page, Simone is on a different page. You know, Simone is a little bit more stubborn than Dr. Jackie at this point. Okay, even though they both are, it seems like Simone is just a little bit more hesitant. I should say, not necessarily stubborn, but a little bit more hesitant. And truth be told, if I was with somebody and we got into it or whatever, and I feel like I got hurt, and, you know, they want to reach out and they want to talk after all this time. And I feel like they could have been did that or whatever. We could have been repaired the friendship. And I could have also reached out too. I probably would have been hesitant too because that's just my nature. You know, I don't trust easily. And when I feel like a person hurt me, I'm quick to like say that you hurt me and then I'll let that shit go. And then when I mean I'll let that go, I mean I will let that whole relationship go. Okay, it is what it is. Because then at that moment in time, depending on the level of hurt that you did to me, I won't trust you again. And I won't put myself in that predicament to get hurt again. So I don't know if that's what Simone is doing, but this is just sad to me. Okay, moving on from that, we get to Anila and um, Dr. Kieran, and they going to check on the house. Baby, they said that house went from $1.3 to $3 million, okay? And he do elective surgery and stuff like that, and because COVID came in and just, you know, he wasn't working for a good 10 weeks or so, and that was where his money was coming from, so, like, his profit earnings and shit was just went down, like, 80%, 90%, okay? I said, damn, that's a lot. Not just 40% or 50%, 80% to 90%. Wow. And he was like, you know, now it's starting to pick back up. He had like 10, 11 surgeries that day. So, you know, things is doing good, better at that point. And it just makes me mad sometimes when I see these men on here. And I know, you know, we talk about equality and stuff like that. And I understand that not everybody want to work. Everybody want to be a working mother and stuff like that. But I get it. But it just... These men on these shows, like Dr. Eugene and I'm seeing Kieran, they be working their asses off to please their woman and to provide for their family. Granted, I know that technically by societal norms or whatever, that's what the man's supposed to do. But I'm not going to be in a relationship and see my spouse breaking their back, you know, trying to support a whole family and me just sitting at home. Uh, playing with the kids and all that stuff. No, 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 no. I'm going to play with the kids and I'm going to go out there and get at least a part-time job and contribute to the household some type of way to make me feel like I'm contributing some way other than just, you know, being the mother to your kids and taking care of your home. Because I don't like to see my man or my woman or whoever I would be in a relationship, you know, whatever the situation is, scenario. I wouldn't want to see them just breaking their back, and that's what they doing. And he frustrated because she nitpicking everything. And he was like, bitch, you sound like your mama, okay? And she got offended by that, but that's exactly what it is. I said, you want all this stuff, but I'm pretty sure you're not contributing a dime to making this stuff work, okay? Girl, it wouldn't be me. So, um, Eugene had to take some testosterone uh, shots or whatever. Um... <clears throat> And I've heard of this, you know, I never know, I never knew that they go, men go through 
uh, a period of time where they lose a lot of testosterone and they have to, you know, regenerate it, use artificial whatever, and they go through their own little menopause. Women go through menopause when they lose estrogen and stuff like that, and, you know, they stop their cycles and it have them going different ways and whatever. Um, and then for men, it's called andropause. I never knew that that's, it was an actual term for it, but that's what it was. And, you know, he been, uh, needing that cause he said he'd been feeling sluggish and, you know, just wasn't thinking about sex enough. And then Toya had to put out there at all, you know, so, uh, he was on it for like a month and Toya even said that she can see the change in him and, you know, you know, she was having a little issue with trying to stick the thing in his ass or whatever, but, you know, they got through with it, and as soon as he did, the, uh, got his shot, he wanted some, so, you know, do what you gotta do, um, and then we see Simone's cousin comes over to, uh, send off, um, her son, Michael, they're about to get ready to take him down to, uh, Lee University for school, and, you know, they was just having a good time with that. And, of course, she's going through the mommy blues with that, you know, seeing her youngest baby leaving. And um, they was up there talking whether or not she going to cry or not. But, you know, that's cute. So, um, you know, Simone was in the car with Cecil. Michael and Miles are in the car driving down to Lee University. And they're in there basically talking about two different things, okay? You know, um, the boys are talking about the fact that he has a black university, well, black student union to join. You know, he's going to a mostly white school and at least he has that. And then it goes to talking about girls and all this stuff and how if he didn't have basketball, you know, at least he got basketball so he just don't have to be going to school school, you know? And, um, Simone and Cecil was talking about the fact that, you know, Simone wants to know whether or not should she be asking Michael the invasive questions of, you know, what you're doing today? What's on your schedule? Do you have to do this? Do you have to do that? Because she's somewhat trying to learn from the mistakes. I feel like she thinks that she made with Miles. You know, Miles was her first son who went down at a Howard University and didn't complete it and came back. And I guess he was struggling and she didn't ask these questions and stuff like that. But like, you know, Cecil was saying, it probably would have been the same way. It probably would have been the same way because he was still hiding what was going on, you know? And so they're just talking about the differences and, you know, just being a mom and what's going to happen and things like that with the kids. Then we see Dr. Heavenly, um, you know, she got her son, Damon Jr. there. He's pre-med and he's studying into her footsteps, going into her footsteps to be a dentist as well. And so, um, you know, she, he's shadowing her for the day, for the day, <clears throat> And, uh, she's doing Miracle's Teeth, the young lady that she had earlier on the show who, uh, was protesting out here in Chicago and the cops knocked her tooth out, her teeth out. And so she's back again to get her permanent crowns put in. And of course, you know, first you tell her, don't look at my son like that. You know, y'all ain't finna hook up or whatever. But then you start doting on him. Oh, he this, he that or whatever. Girl, which one is it? Get you a girl like this. Get you a wife like this. Cause she got this and all this stuff. Boo, boo, boo. I said, Dr. Heavenly, yeah, don't make no sense. Okay. But I mean, lift your son up or whatever. Put him on a pedestal or whatever. Say he a good man. That's what you got to do sometimes. You know, give him a little credit. Make him feel a little good about himself. But other than that, you know, she did the girl's teeth and she really, really enjoyed him. And she did a good job. So they got Michael settled into his dorm. You know, he had a little issue with the fact that it wasn't a co-ed dorm. But, you know, they got him settled in, took him to go get something to eat in, which is giving him some advice. You know, Miles was giving him advice about what he should expect and what he should do and uh, where he went wrong and at school and, you know, giving um, just wisdom, words of wisdom. And, you know, she had to leave her baby. And that was a touching scene when they hugged. And you could tell they both was trying to... Michael, you know, he probably going to cry when he get back in the dorm, go in the bathroom and shed a couple of tears or whatever. Or it's going to hit him later that day. You know, Simone probably going to cry up in the car on the way back. But it was a really nice little scene ending to the episode. But that was Married to Medicine. Once again, I apologize for this being late. Y'all already understand why. My neighbors. Um, And I will see you guys later. Peace.